morning, everyone. I'm here with uh, my running mate, Tara Samples. I'm Dennis Kucinich, candidate for governor of Ohio, and uh, here with Lieutenant Governor candidate Tara Samples. And today we're announcing uh, a major uh, Ohio criminal justice reform package, uh, which will impact the people of Ohio in a very positive way and will, for the first time, uh, create a stronger, safer, healthier, more prosperous Ohio because what we're proposing here, prison reform, drug policy and treatment reform, legal reform, criminal enforcement and community policing reform, and a new uh, sweeping, previously unused approach to stop the abuse of power by any elected or appointed official or public officer at any level of government uh, whose actions would violate the laws of Ohio or the Constitution. So I'd like to introduce uh, uh, my running mate, Tara Samples, a councilwoman from Akron, whose work on the city council in Akron has always been attuned to the criminal justice issues which are so important to the people of not only Akron and Cleveland, but the entire state of Ohio. So Tara Samples, would you uh, share with us uh, these ideas that uh, we're moving forward with in criminal justice reform? Absolutely. And I first want to thank you all for being here with us today and a special thanks to all of our community leaders, activists and pastors who have um, shown up in support of us today and this criminal justice reform piece. Today Dennis and I take an aggressive and progressive stand against gun violence in the inner city, the over incarceration of black and brown people, against the private profit prison industry, and the over incarceration of nonviolent offenders. We stand here today in support of criminal justice reform. We stand here in support of trauma-informed services, peace circles, and CIT training for all officers, treatment for those with mental health issues and addiction issues. We stand here today in support of restoring community and police relations in the neighborhood and equipping our police officers across the state with body cameras and dash cameras and stress reduction benefits for those officers. Uh, I want to say that the uh, criminal justice system in Ohio, as well as nationally, has a shameful record of disproportionately prosecuting, targeting, uh, and jailing and otherwise discriminating against African American and Latino communities. Arrest, conviction, and incarceration and incontrovertible evidence of the facts. For decades, a pattern of mass incarceration has devastated minority and low income communities, creating instability, uncertainty, fear, and loss of hope. We must support and protect the constitutional rights of those caught up in the justice system regardless of an individual's social or economic status. A system of injustice strips people of their freedom based on class, color, or geography. It also institutionalizes the permanent, lifelong imposition of negative consequences that affect family stability, employment, civil rights, voting rights, and any consequences of e or any semblance of equal opportunity. Now, one of the first steps that a governor can take and that I will take in addressing this web of interrelated inequities relates to the prison system itself. The state of Ohio currently has three for-profit prisons, and I'm going to name them so you know exactly uh, where I'm talking about here. These prison institutions are, are, are housing a total of, of, of about 5,000 inmates who are under the jurisdiction, not of the laws of the state of Ohio per se, but of a system of for-profit prisons. They include the North uh, Central Correctional Complex, located in Marion Williamsport, on Marion Williamsport Road in Marion, Ohio. Uh, there's 2,868 inmates there. The Lake Erie Correctional Institute, privately operated. There's about 1,750 inmates there. That's in Conneaut. And the Northeast Ohio Correctional Center, uh, which has about 763 inmates, that's located in Youngstown, Ohio. I want to make it very clear that our administration, as we move uh, forward with this campaign, stands for the end of the for-profit prison 
system that upon taking office will issue an executive order that abolishes for-profit prisons and, uh, that, and that no person convicted of any offense against the laws of the state of Ohio will be able to then be remanded to any facility of incarceration which operates on a for-profit basis. Today we stand with you all, letting the people of Ohio know that we stand with them, that we stand amongst the people. And this is not just a political stomp. This is something that Dennis and I have done from the beginning of our elected capacity. And we will continue to do that as governor and lieutenant governor for the state of Ohio. This is our commitment to you all. Now, how, how has that moved forward besides ending for-profit prisons? Well, we're also going to focus on speedy release for low-level uh, marijuana uh, and uh, nonviolent marijuana offenses. Ohioans are spending millions a year uh, to house low-level nonviolent offenders, particularly those convicted of committing petty drug offenses. Uh, we are going to uh, be committing that upon our election, we'll immediately create a program to speedily review all nonviolent drug-related convictions on a case-by-case -case basis to determine uh, whether or not a commutation of a sentence is in order. I, I want to say that our presence here indicates we're going to be emphasizing rehabilitation and there'll be a renewed emphasis that provides nonviolent offenders with reasonable and appropriate opportunities to rejoin society, to find jobs, to get an education. Those who have paid their debt to, to society should not have to continue to pay again and again and again, being denied opportunities for jobs, being denied opportunities to vote. Tara Samples and I intend to change this system, and one way to do it is to make sure that people are assured a path to reintegration into society, to restore civil rights and liberties, and to take those steps. And I want to say that as governor, I'll immediately move to reinstate the voting rights of so many people who've been denied an opportunity to participate in the political process simply because uh, they have had a conviction, which, by the way, they've already paid their price for. So we're going to move very strongly to try to get people, give people an opportunity to be reinvolved in the society. As Chair Samples, we will transform Ohio politics to make it work for all people, regardless of their social and economic background. We will stand here with the people and by the people and for the people. And that is our commitment to all Ohioans, regardless of race, creed, or color, or party affiliation. One of the things that, uh, uh, that we know we need to do, we need to invest in community policing and support departments that are, are innovative in trying to develop better relationships with the communities. Uh, law enforcement personnel certainly need better training. They also need to be better paid, and we stand here in support of, of having better trained and better uh, paid police, uh, given the, the dangerous nature of the work. Uh, and we also have to promote peaceful exchanges between people in the community and law enforcement. Uh, we need to work with uh, local police departments to increase community policing so police become familiar with the neighborhoods they're working in. And we need to foster trust and, uh, and integrate police as members of the community uh, they protect. Now, with respect to that, we want police to have the opportunity to pursue a higher education. We want police to be able to be incentivized to live in the communities they're policing so they're more familiar with it. We want to make sure that if, uh, if a policeman is killed in the line of duty that there'll be a special fund to take care of, a, of, of the policeman or policewoman's family. I mean, these are some of the things we're looking at in a broad criminal justice reform that will enable people to understand that there's, there's, that's, there's one side, the side of peaceful community, and we all have to be on that side. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to add Absolutely. And, and touching on what uh, Congressman stated, we will work with local police departments to ensure that every officer is equipped with body cameras. Each and every officer is equipped with body cameras and that the data storage that is a big part of the body cameras, that we make sure that there's funding for that as well. The, um, uh, the state of Ohio policy regarding law enforcement will consist of the following. 
The conduct of each and every law enforcement official shall be, shall be subject to a transparent process of public review in the event of unnecessary aggression, brutality, or possibility or suspicion of a wrongful death. We're going to work to demilitarize the police. No military equipment or ordinance used by the U.S. Department of Defense shall be used for purposes of law enforcement or crowd control anywhere in the state of Ohio. I want to make it clear that under our administration, the Ohio Highway Patrol will not be permitted to participate in any law enforcement action in the, in the jurisdiction of any state or territory. They'll not be permitted to uh, participate in any law enforcement action that specifically targets a group of individuals based on race, creed, color, or low-income neighborhoods. They'll not be permitted to participate in any law enforcement action that targets low-income neighborhoods uh, directly off of interstates. As Tara mentioned, we're going to be requiring the use of body cameras uh, in all Ohio uh, patrol law enforcement activities. Now, we're going to uh, work with those departments to develop de-escalation programs that will equip officers with the knowledge and experience they need to successfully minimize use of force. Absolutely. Now, I, I just want to say that, uh, that this law enforcement uh, approach that we're taking here today uh, includes something that is unprecedented. Under the Ohio Revised Code, uh, Chapter 3.0708, the governor of the state of Ohio has the authority to uh, review decisions by sheriffs and prosecutors. And if any evidence is produced that the decisions made by sheriffs or prosecutors are not consistent with the laws of the state or with the civil the liberty protections of those who are in custody or have been apprehended, uh, I will not hesitate as governor to use that section of the law to prefer charges to a uh, common police court judge who will then decide whether to hear the case or whether it's going to go to a jury. We're talking about a sea change in criminal justice uh, uh, reform and we're ready to move forward in a way that supports communities, in a way that supports people of color who feel that they're just shut out of the system and have no recourse, and in a way that supports police as well where they're doing their job right. So I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Samples. Is there anything that you'd like to say in, in closing as we, uh, as we as we turn this over for a response to our community leaders? So I just want to say to learn more about our criminal justice reform platform, log on to consentage.com. It's very aggressive, and I know it's one that the all Ohioans will be proud of. And so with that, I want to turn it over to... Dr. Richard Montgomery, would you like to share some thoughts? Would you step forward, Doctor, uh, and to, uh, if you could give a response to how you feel about what you've heard. Well, I'm energized and excited about what I just heard from our soon-to-be governor, uh, Dennis Kucinich, and our soon-to-be lieutenant governor, Tara Mosley Samples. Uh, as a citizen of the um, city of Euclid, as a person who lives in greater Cleveland, Cuyahoga County sends the most people to our state prisons and disproportionately African-American. When you look at our state prisons, 75% of the people who are locked up among the 55,000 are African-American and Latino. And we only make up around 8% of the state population, which means that there are significant issues in our law, our law enforcement, and there are significant issues right here in Cuyahoga County. So Kucinich and Mosley Samples are good for Cuyahoga County. They're good for the people to defend their civil rights. And I'm looking forward to not only their candidacy, candidacy, but when they win in November, so that we can we can have a better tomorrow. Because right now are gloomy days. Thank you. Yes. I um first I want to thank um, Mr. Kucinich and Ms. Um, Samples for inviting me to this press conference. As one, yes, my name is Minister Jalan Finney. As one who has been. Um, a part of the criminal justice of the prison system, um, incarcerated multiple times. It is refreshing to hear um, this platform, to read and to um, hear this platform that advocates on behalf of the 50 or so thousand members of the um, Ohio State prison system. The Ohio State prison system, the population would be, I believe, the 13th or 14th largest population, largest city in Ohio. 
And as one who has numerous times went to apply for jobs and was told, fresh out of prison, we would hire you, but you have to wait seven years, come back in seven years, and then we we hire you. These are some of these jobs that's been to do things such as make glass. Uh, with a felony, I wasn't allowed to make glass for seven years. And these, these issues must be addressed because these young men and young women is coming back into society. And if you do not give these young men and women an opportunity to earn a living, an a, 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 a honest living, the question is, what are they going to do? They're going to return right back to the issues that led to them being in incarcerated initially. That's why I'm so honored and um, pleased to um, come and uh, witness this press conference. And um, I support this platform wholeheartedly. Thank you and God bless you. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Baba Afinor. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm representing the Coalition for a Better Life, Peace in the Hood. And what I see here right now is is, 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 is the perfect example that we need here in Ohio. And then it, it, it would get broader and go into the whole United States because the people of this, of this country is suffering from gun violence. And with all these, these uh, type of innovative type of techniques that would open, help us all to be a better, better community, uh, I can't help but be excited about it. And I thank uh, the, the, the soon to be governor and lieutenant governor to uh, for, for invite me here. I don't have a lot to say, but I have a lot of friends and relatives that's been incarcerated for various you know, cr criminal charges. And I would love to see these things happen so that they, they can uh, also uh, become uh, exponents of, of this, 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 this revitalizing of the code itself. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, is there is there anyone else who is here who would like to be heard from regarding the things that we talked about? And if if not, uh, I, I just want to say that uh, the brother here mentioned gun violence, and this is something that uh, Tara Samples and I are are dedicated to focusing on. Now, no one wants to take guns out of the hand of responsible, law-abiding gun owners, uh, but we need laws that protect the innocent and also protect the police. For, uh, from uh, gun violence, and we need to establish laws that prohibit those with mental health issues uh, from having guns uh, that would make them a danger uh, to, uh, to themselves and to others. Uh, no one with uh, uh, weapons under disability charges, a conviction or a violent fel of a violent felony, or a mental health issue representing a danger should have access to weapons. And we support, we firmly support the home rule rights of people in the communities across the state to make laws regarding the protection of the health and safety of their citizens. And uh, I know that uh, Tara Samples has uh, expressed great concern about levels of gun violence. This community we're standing in has had to deal with a significant amount of gun violence, which, why, by the way, is why we're standing here right now right. in recognition that this community has had a great deal of difficulty. So we're here to say help is on the way. Did you want to add anything, Councilwoman, nope, to that? Said it all. Okay, well, I want to thank uh, each and every one of you for being here. Uh, we are going to uh, be making additional statements in the next uh, 24 hours uh, about uh, the nature of gun violence that we're all familiar with, the terrible tragedy that struck in, in, in Florida and that's been striking across this country. Our hearts go out to the families who have uh, suffered grievously for the death or, or wounding of their loved ones and the shattering of so many lives. Uh, the whole nation's in prayer for uh, the people, but we have to uh, do more than prayer. You know, the Bible tells us uh, uh, prayer is very important, but so is good works. So thank, thank you very much for all being here, and you'll be hearing from us soon. Thank you.